So I know that I've talked to you guys about being a trauma PA and being on 24 hour call, which I absolutely love because it allows me to spend a lot more time with my family. Um, I'm currently homeschooling my kids, so I need all the time that I can get. Um, and I was asked a question about like, do you even sleep on a 24 hour shift? Like how, how does that work? And so that is what I will be answering in today's video. What's up you guys, it's Adana, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so again, I had a question posed to me by one of you guys, um, one of my subscribers, talking about uh, what exactly, like, do I do really, I guess you can say on a 24 hour uh, shift, like, am I able to sleep? Um, and so I'm gonna read the question for you guys, put it up on the screen, and then we can get into answering it. This one is from Steven Wilson. He said, I am a firefighter slash paramedic and work two to three 24 hour shifts a week but get to sleep. How does the 24 hour shift work for you as a PA? And so, I mean, maybe pretty similar to what it might work like for you, Steven. Um, I honestly don't know because since I don't know what a paramedic's 24 hour shift looks like, um, I can't really compare, but for me, I can talk to you about what my shift looks like. So typically, um, we're doing a lot. So as a trauma PA, again, I really I'm an acute care surgery PA. So I deal not only with trauma, but general surgery. And then we cover thoracic and vascular surgery at night. Um, when our day thoracic and vascular surgery PA goes home. So with that being said, there are four different services that we're covering at a time, and that means that there are a lot of patients that we have to deal with. Now granted, there are three of us, there's usually a trauma PA, like down in the trauma bay, um, and then trauma floor PAs who are covering the other three services. But there are a lot of patients and they require a lot of things. And so during the day, um, there may be times when, when our census is extremely high that we are extremely busy. And so, um, you know, we go and we start rounding, we get to know what's going on with our patients, what happened to them overnight, you know, what their labs are looking like. We're looking at all of this information to really assess what's happening with them. And then after that, we are finishing up like all of the various different things that need to be done. If any chest tubes need to be pulled or, um, you know, if a chest tube needs to be placed, if a line needs to be placed, there are all these various different nuances that have to be done. Um, wound vac changes and just local wound care, depending on if it's something that we debrided or not. So all of that is happening throughout the day. Now that may have like the rounding process, we literally could have started rounding at like nine o'clock and maybe not 9 a.m. and maybe not have finished until like noon or one. And so the time to like eat and get breakfast and then maybe even get lunch is really shot. And so you're kind of just going through these motions because sometimes you miss those things and you're eating on the fly, you're eating on the run because remember that we are still a trauma um, PA and we're still a trauma hospital and so trauma Traumas still get called. And so if my trauma bay PA is inundated with traumas and has at least two um, that they're running on their own, then another one is called. We have to go and do that. Um, like I said, there are other people that are involved. We do have residents there. They're typically in the OR, and so sometimes they're not able to help with those traumas, but if they are, they can also take a trauma or they're rounding with us. But that is typically how like the day goes. And throughout the rest of the day, once you've finished rounding and you've written all of your notes on all of your patients and you've done all of the various different nuances of things that need to happen, then that's when you're kind of just in this lull and you're waiting for traumas. And so the question was asked, do I get to sleep? All right, well, sometimes I do. I mean, it all depends. So you have like your floor patients that you're always typically getting called for um, by the nurses, you know, you, they may need a medication or may need you to renew a medication. Um, maybe the patient is febrile, they, you know, you want to go see and check what's going on with their patient. It, it, various different things can happen. And so even though you're in this break from traumas or you're waiting for traumas, you're still dealing with your floor patients, okay? 
Now, on top of that, as you continue to go on throughout the night, you know, where like, let's say six o'clock in the evening or so, traumas are typically coming in at that time. You know, we get a lot of motor vehicle accidents because people are coming from home and some of them are just driving ridiculous. And, you know, that's what we have to deal with. Um, we do get, you know, GSWs or gunshot wounds and, you know, stabbings and things like that. Those are, they're regular, but few and far in between, um, you know, as respect to our falls and our motor vehicle accidents. So we'll be dealing with that. I typically will go like be kind of done for the night essentially at like 10 o'clock. Sometimes there are traumas that come in at like 11 and 12, but for the most part, I'm finished at 10 and that's when I can go and just really chart check my patients or go up to the floor, check on anybody that I was concerned about throughout the day and then come and wind down to try to sleep. And I say try because that is not always the case, okay? Um, and so sometimes we're, we're there, I literally just get back up to my call room and then the annoying beeper sound goes off and a trauma is called, okay? And so at that point, it's like, all right, okay, let me run downstairs to this trauma and see what's going on. We do take turns in traumas to try to get each other to at least get some type of rest. Um, but sometimes it's not always th the case. Sometimes, you know, there may be one of us that's down in the OR with our attending because somebody is really critical. And then we also had two of the traumas come in. And so the two of us that are left are in the trauma bay dealing with that trauma. Um, so do I typically get to sleep? I, I mean, yeah, I, I get to take like little um, naps here and there, like always interrupted either by a phone call or a trauma. Um, I think the most that of hours, like straight black that I've gotten to sleep was maybe five hours. Um, you know, woke up at six, I would say, um, went to bed around one, which was amazing because that's like a good night. You're like, man, I got some good rest. But typically you'll get traumas called at 3 a.m. You'll get traumas called at, you know, four. Uh, you'll get that inopportune trauma called at like 7 a.m. when you're about to get off and you're like, why are you outside? Like, you know, shooting at each other or stabbing each other. Like, this is like not okay, you know, or like, I need you to be in your house. And these are the things that are kind of running through your head, but you still have to take care of your patients and you have to make sure that they're safe um, and that you're, you're ensuring that, you know, you're taking care of their lives. And so ultimately, yes and no, I get to sleep, okay? It all depends on how many traumas come in and how my floor patients are doing. Um, it's always interrupted for the most part and, you know, never really good sleep. That's why anytime I go home, um, if you've subscribed to this channel or if you've followed me on Instagram and you've seen me like post call, I'm tired, okay? I'm extremely tired. I'll sleep without fail for four hours. It doesn't matter what time I go to bed throughout the day on my post-call day. If I come off of work at nine and I do stuff throughout the day and then I start, like I go in the bed at 12, um, then I'll wake up at four. That's typically how it happens. And I feel a little bit rejuvenated, but you really take that post-call day, like that entire day to recover. Um, and some days we work back to back where we're on call one day, we're off, and then we're on call the immediate next day. And those are brutal, but you do those days so that you're able to get like a nine day period off or an eight day period or even a five day period off that you can either spend with your family rejuvenating. Um, you can, you know, go out on a little mini vacation if you want to, whatever the case may be, but that's your time. And so that's why I really love 24 hour shifts. And yes, although I don't always get to sleep uninterrupted, I do get some naps in. Um, it is a fulfilling job. I get to do a lot. I get to see a lot. And I'm really excited that I chose this career or I guess it chose me. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Stephen, for this question. I really appreciate it. If you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Follow me and GTCU on Instagram at Get that C University and check us out on getthatcuniversity.com. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't already done so and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.